Case uh, three. I could do this one. Um, so kind of, we're seeing, looks like a papular lesion. And then my eye's going directly to that collection of pink in the dermis. Yeah, we got three cuts of it here. Pink yeah. ball in the dermis, yes. Yeah, so it looks like pretty uh, dense collagen from out here. And then as we're going closer, um, we're kind of just seeing this like world pattern where it's kind of going around each other. But I think we can see some remnants of like north-south vessels. Um, so with this dense collagen and this world pattern with the vessels in that way and just its location in the dermis, this would be pretty good for a hypertrophic scar. Yeah, very good. It, it is. It's a kind of an unusual uh, thick form of scar. And you're, I like your point that, that this uh, has a, a bit of a world pattern. So you could start thinking of things maybe like when you see this, you could start thinking about like a perineurioma or some other esoteric soft tissue things. But in this case, it's just a funny looking scar and scars uh, can take on a variety of appearances. Here at the edge, you can see it as more of the kind of fascicles of a parallel fibroblast that you'd expect in a scar. You can also tell that this is a new lesion that's, that's uh, happened since the person got old because look. There, this is an older sun damaged person whose dermis has been replaced with elastosis, and this fibrotic nodule has wiped out the elastosis. That means it's new. They got this. This collagen was not the collagen they were born with. It's the collagen that came after they already had de developed that elastosis. So once they were an older adult, so that's a nice little trick for any time you see pink collagen that's replaced blue solar elastosis. You know that that has that has come relatively recently and has not been there since the person was born. So that can be helpful. And that trick only works for sun damaged people, but but it's a nice little trick that helps out in occasional cases. Um, here's another view. The other thing you can see is that the collagen here extends all the way up to the surface. So this is where the, the, you know, the cut was made, whether they had surgery, probably had surgery or something like that. I don't know the history here. And the uh, cells are just bland fibroblasts or myofibroblasts, which I believe kind of exist on a spectrum, and then elongated vessels. And here's another look at it here. And um, it's uh, coming into focus. And scars, depending on their age, can sometimes have a little bit of a bluish myxoid or a dematous background. The younger scar particularly tends to have that as it's kind of closer to granulation tissue. The other thing we have here is uh, a little tiny focus of something else. Let's see, give it a second for that to focus up. What's going on here? Just a little incidental finding. Does anyone know? So right. Yeah, here we've got something that the body seems to think doesn't belong. Right, it's got foreign body giant cell reaction forming a, a, a foreign body granuloma around this aggregate of kind of clear, um, fragmented. See, that's kind of like a regular little sheet-like um, material. And it, we can't do it here on a virtual slide, but under the microscope, if you flip your condenser or put your finger under the light source, you can see that there's kind of a three dimensionality to this. You can imagine it here, but it, it kind of, it's what we call refractile, right? You can see the light makes the edges of it stand out. Uh, there's probably a more elegant scientific explanation uh, for how to explain refractile, but that's what it looks like to me. It looks a little bit 3D. And so whenever I see something that looks kind of refractile in 3D and there's giant cells around it, I suspect that it's probably foreign material or, or maybe foreign material. And so in this case, this is actually, this is actually injected steroid, Kenalog, uh, or, or some other uh, form of injected um, corticosteroid. And for some, you can usually see this in the middle of the scar, like in keloids particularly, when they've tried to inject them with steroids and then decide eventually to remove them. You'll sometimes see little islands of this in the middle of the scar tissue. Here it's kind of outside the scar. It does not always have a foreign body reaction around it. In fact, most of the time when I see it, it does not but I guess it can. Um, uh, and I'm not exactly sure why that, what, what, if it's uh, some uh, additive in there or something that makes the foreign body giant cells uh, react to it. I don't know enough about the makeup of the, of the uh, actual injected steroid that about what makes the giant cells come to it. But if you see this like kind of frothy whitish blue, um, it, it sometimes it looks a little bit different color than this. Um, I don't know if it, if, I don't know why it looks this way here, but anyway, you can, um, you can think about that. That might just be steroid. Also, if you see something that looks like foreign material in a scar, it could be that the person had like a penetrating injury 
and foreign material got there, like a foreign body got there. And that can be helpful actually if you're trying to decide if something's a scar. If you polarize the tissue and you find little fragments of polarizable stuff or little bits of suture or gauze, like gauze material, sometimes little tiny strips come off of the gauze. It's totally normal. Um, it happens in pretty much every operation. And then you'll get little tiny fragments of it in the middle of the scar. That can tell you for sure, you know, this patient has had either a, a trauma or an operation, something that has inserted this foreign polarizable material into their dermis and then scar is formed. So it can be helpful sometimes if you're debating, if you don't know the history and you're wondering, is this a scar or not? Polarize the tissue and see if you find foreign material, that can be a helpful thing. And then um, regular scar, hypertrophic scar, keloid. I feel like some people say hypertrophic scars should not have keloidal collagen bundles. I don't really know if that's true. I've always thought that any that a keloid looking scar could either be keloid or hypertrophic scar, depending on clinically if it's just you know a kind of stretched out wider scar or if it's bulging out beyond the margins of where the original injury to the skin was. Um, so I don't know. Some people may have said, "Oh, you shouldn't have keloidal collagen in a hypertrophic scar," and I was like, "I don't know who made that rule, but." I don't care. So in any case, if I saw this, I would just say scar and I would sign it out. Okay, guys. Next case.